Hello and welcome to another video from Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. My name is Todd and what we have today is a Phoenix Gold M100 amplifier that has come in for repair. So uh, when I originally took this apart, I did notice that uh, the first thing right off, right off the bat, I noticed the fuse uh, was open. So a, a short, uh, typically somewhere in the power supply, and the uh, everything was checking out good. I didn't have any shorts in the output transistors. I didn't have any shorts in the pre-drivers. Uh, so I uh, was looking around a little closer at the power supply. I didn't have shorts in the power supply transistors, but I did have an oil that was around the uh, 12 volt filtering capacitors here and they weren't bulged they didn't have any signs of uh, letting go of the magic um, smoke or anything uh, but what I did is uh, I noticed that I thought it was the electrolyte of the capacitors so I pulled the old original capacitors out and uh, cleaned up the board and I put some new Rubicons in for the power supply here and uh, and lo and behold I do believe the primary failure of this board was uh, failed capacitors and, uh, and I do believe that was it just some failed capacitors and it was all three banks had oil underneath of them and the uh, the board itself had puddle of electrolyte around the base of the capacitors so I replaced those popped a new fuse in and it still wouldn't start well oh and I forgot to mention uh, another one of the first things I noticed before I even was thinking of the capacitors was the SG3525 uh, it blew a hole in the top of it, um, which again was a huge indicator of a failed power supply. So I got the new capacitors in and went to fire up the power supply. And as soon as I hooked up my 12 volts, the amp was trying to come on. I was like, oh, what's going on here? Well, Q2 down here uh, is responsible for the uh, remote turn on of this amplifier. So uh, Q2 here is a, uh, let me tell you guys what this is. This is a ZTX749 uh, transistor. So I took that out. It was showing it as being shorted uh, in circuit. It showed a short. So I pulled that out, hooked up my 12 volts and lo and behold, the amplifier didn't come on. So I knew that that was the bad part. I do have some uh, ZTX 749s coming, but they're not in yet. So I temporarily put a, uh, oh gosh, what did I use in that thing? I used a, hold on, I need some light here because I'm blind. Uh, let me see what transistor. Oh, so I just used an MPSA 56 temporarily to get this uh, remote circuit to function correctly. So I put that in and I hit the old foot switch, the remote, and it would turn on and off with the remote. So we were good on that, but it was still going into protect. So I was looking around uh, over here. Let's see, what is this? U5, U5 or U6? So over here, U six uh is a lm uh 393 and if you guys are familiar with amplifier repair typically your 393 is uh involved in some form of protection circuits 
So I uh, was looking around this 393, doing some probing here, checking the diodes in place. And it, crazy enough, I just I was checking Q15 over here, which is the uh, transistors responsible for the LEDs. And I found this underneath the transistor, which is the bottom of the original 393. So uh, there was a short significant enough to, uh, usually I say pop the top on transistors. Well, it popped the bottom right off the transistor. So I just wanted to show you guys, you know, and it was sitting on the board to a point where you would never know that that uh, came apart because it was perfectly in place until I bumped it with the tip of my tweezers and saw that thing scooting around underneath of it. So I replaced the 393. And uh, now I'm at a point here to where we can fire up the board. Uh, I moved the scope in a different spot because it was in the way of the power supply. So excuse the scope being down in the lower left hand corner. Uh, hopefully you guys don't mind that. But I really wanted to just show uh, that this simple... Uh, fault of the power supply of the capacitors could lead to so many other things happening on the board. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my power supply. It's my 10 amp, my 10 amp. Yeah, it is. It's my uh, 12 volt 10 amp current limited supply that I'm using. Uh, this will not start on two amps. So just let you guys know, as I'd mentioned in some previous videos, some class ABs will not start on two amps. The inrush current is too high. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fire up the power supply here. Let's see if I can manage this without getting my hands in the way of the camera. So this is the gate of uh, the tr power supply transistors and let's fire up this remote here. So there's the gate. Uh, I gotta kind of get that a little bit better here for you guys, hold on. Let me uh, increase the voltage, shorten up the time base here just a little bit and fire this thing up. All right, so there's the gates. Let me make sure I'm not overheating here. Feeling good. Feeling good, no excess heat. So there's the gates, looking great. Do we have rail voltage? Uh, we do, 45 volts positive. And 45 volts negative. All right, so we have power supplies going, rail voltage is going. I have a 50 hertz signal going on the input. Gain is all the way counterclockwise, as I always set up the amplifiers to begin with. So let's check out the uh, output. Do we have a good output signal? And there's the output signal. We have uh, 50 hertz on the right channel and we have uh, 50 hertz on the left channel. So there we are. The uh, new power supply capacitors, a new 393, a, a temporary turn on remote turn on transistor. And I did have to do some resoldering on the RCA inputs here on the bottom side. So if you guys are using something like the Hakko uh, FR301 here to desolder your terminals or your pins on your boards, please be careful because the heat of this desoldering iron will peel the pads right up off the board. So these are really sensitive boards. So that pretty much covers this board here. A couple of just again, uh, power supply. Capacitors, A393, and a new SG3525, and this amplifier is back up and running again. So if you guys have any questions, please leave them down below. 
And uh, again, keep your fingers out of the rail voltage here. Sometimes it can get a little spicy. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.